Speaker, five minutes. So granted. Mr. Speaker, thank you. I, uh, I rise to condemn the brutal attack on the residents of Camp Ashraf, Iranian exiles, by the Iraqi police. Yesterday, I learned that Iraqi police forces are beating unarmed Camp Ashraf residents and that they've been brutally assaulting them. I've been informed that this attack has resulted in at least eight deaths and over 400 injuries. This beating of unarmed men and women is despicable, and my understanding is that the unjustifiable attack is still underway. These Iranian exiles are unarmed today because they voluntarily surrendered their weapons to United States forces in exchange for a U.S. guarantee of their security in 2003. They are protected persons under Article 27 of the Fourth Geneva Convention. The attack on these unarmed persons violates not only international law, but also basic human rights. The European Parliament, Amnesty International, and other international organizations have expressed deep concern about the safety of these Iranian exiles. Furthermore, when United States forces withdrew from Camp Ashraf, the United States and Iraq signed an agreement that the Iraqi agree uh, government would guarantee their safety. The Iraqi government is not keeping its promise, and it is not upholding its obligations under international law. The Iranian dictatorship's fingerprints are all over this attack. The residents of Camp Ashraf are enemies of the Iranian regime. Camp Ashraf residents have been a vital source of intelligence information on the Ira Iranian regime's nuclear, chemical, and biological weapons programs and other important intelligence information. As a result, the Iranian regime, under the direction of the tyrannical so-called Supreme Leader, is putting immense pressure on the Iraqi government to hand over the Iranian exiles in Camp Ashraf. In a meeting on February 28th of this year, the Supreme Leader urged the Iraqi president to expel the Iranian exiles at Camp Ashraf immediately. This incursion by Iraqi forces appears to be an ugly attempt by the Iraqi government to appease the Iranian regime. They may even return these exiles to Iran. That would be a condemnable and cowardly act. In a public statement on August 28, 2008, Amnesty International expressed profound concern that those Iranian exiles would suffer torture and even death if they're forced to return. And as we've seen since the sham election of June 12th of this year, the Iranian dictatorship's deep hatred of those who oppose its cruelty and repression would mean almost certain death for the Iranian exiles and their families if they're repatriated to Iran. We must do everything in our power to prevent such an atrocity from taking place. Already, the Congressional Iran Human Rights and Democ Democracy Caucus, the Chairman and Ranking Member of the House Committee on Foreign Affairs, the Euro European Parliament's Free of a, fr of a Friends of a Free Iran, and the European Parliament's International Committee in Search of Justice, and others have expressed deep concern over the treatment of Camp Ashraf residents at the hands of the Iraqi, of the Iraqi government. Today, Iranian Americans from around the United States have begun a, begun a hunger strike at the White House to demand that the, these attacks be stopped, that abducted Camp Ashraf residents be returned, and that the international groups such as the United Nations and the Red Cross that want to be able to get into Camp Ashraf be permitted to do so. I call on President Obama to demand that the Iraqi government immediately put an end to this attack. We must not stand by and allow physical aggression against unarmed Iranians in exile. We must stand with the Iranian pro-democracy activists, both in exile and inside Iran, who work for the day when the people of Iran can live free, free from fear and fear free from oppression. We must ensure that the protection that the Iranian exiles uh, were promised by the United States is given to them, and that this aggression cease. I yield back. Gentlemen.